Hello everyone and welcome to Wednesday Winners. My name is Skrullizuts and today we will take a look at Everspace. Everspace is a space combat game with heavy roguelike elements and crafting from Rockfish Games. It is currently in early access on Steam for €27.99 or your regional equivalent. The game is expected to come out in a full version in the first quarter of 2017. Let's start by going over the options menu. First off, we have the controls. The game has full controller support, so if this is the kind of game you prefer to play on a gamepad, you totally can. But I personally play this on a keyboard and mouse and the controls on them are very good. But you can rebind essentially everything, which is a good thing, because if you're used to having different controls, you can have them here as well. In display we have the usual Unreal Engine 4 settings, starting with resolution, which starts at a very low 800x600 and goes up to 4K, 3 display options, windowed, borderless and full screen. A vSync option that allows you to smoothen frame rate, essentially occasionally turning vSync off whenever there could be a chance of stuttering. Then we have two FOV sliders, one for the first person view and second for third person view. They both go up to 110, but I feel the default setting is pretty good. Next are a few graphical presets, the usual stuff, going from low to epic. And next are the sliders for individual graphic settings. Sadly, there is little information to them, so it will take a bit of tweaking here and there to know which settings are impacting your hardware the most if you want to squeeze a bit more FPS out of it. Again, all of these settings go from low to epic, but there isn't a lot of them. It would be nice to have more, and seriously, more information would be so useful. The choices we have are anti-aliasing quality, effects quality, post-processing quality, shadows quality, textures quality, and lastly, view distance quality. The sound settings provide three separate sliders. One for music, one for the sound effects, and the last one is for voiceover. In the game settings we can find a slider for when does the camera shake. The default setting is off, but you can also choose your camera to shake upon important things happening or to shake upon everything. The second choice of the game menu is vibration. If you're using a controller that supports vibration, here you can choose to either have it on or off. The third option is to reset the current run and the fourth option is to reset the whole game. Altogether, the options menu is good when it comes to the gameplay, but the graphic options could really use more choices and more information on what exactly are you changing and how it will impact the game's performance. Now let's jump into the game and see what it's actually like. I've played about 5 hours at the moment, so I've progressed quite a bit in the roguelike part of the game. First off, let's talk about the most obvious thing. This game is gorgeous. If there is even a small shred of a person who loves space in you, you will obviously have to agree with this. Unreal Engine really shines here and allows for some breathtaking visuals. The game is obviously even designed around this fact as it has a great option for taking screenshots right in the menu. Freezing time, allowing you to find a camera position that is just perfect and then taking the screenshot. I'm even using an image from the game right now as a wallpaper on one of my monitors. Yeah, I'm a sucker for space. The planets look great and even get a bit of detail when you come closer to them. Effects fit the game very well, explosions evaporate after a small moment, as they should since no oxygen no fire. Seriously, this game's visuals and the mood it creates is just awesome. When we are on the topic of mood inducing tools, we should have a few words about the music and sound effects, starting with the latter. They sound very good, though they are a tiny bit immersion breaking since everybody these days knows, in space, there is no sound due to lack of carrier medium, like air. I'd understand sounds for crashing into stuff, nearby explosion since then you could argue the sound is carried through the hull. Those could be even somewhat muffled because of the shields you have around your ship, but when it comes to things like explosions in the distance, yeah I wish those would be silent. The music is good, nothing special in my personal opinion, but you can make an opinion for yourself as now I will play a bit of it for you. Thank you. 
At the moment, there are two ship types available, and both look very good. The medium and also default ship looking like probably the most stereotypical sci-fi ship ever, and the light ship is obviously inspired by the Star Wars TIE Fighter, just taking their own spin with it. There will be one more ship type coming, the heavy one, but at the moment it is not in the game so I cannot say anything about it. One more interesting thing about this game, it should also be playable in VR. That's where the first person mode should come into play very heavily. And honestly, if I had a VR headset, I'd definitely play the game using it. Since this looks like a great game for VR as cockpit games, where you essentially sit at one spot even in game, are the best for it. And now it's time to talk about the actually important stuff. Gameplay mechanics. And there are a few core ones. Combat, resource gathering, crafting and roguelike elements. Let's start with combat and that also means how the ships actually handle. And they do handle pretty well to be honest. All the controls are tight and precise and are pretty well thought out in terms of their layout. You can easily do turns, boost out of pads of rockets and do some generally impressive things. And this directly translates into combat itself. Combat feels just great. Enemies can and will try to engage you from different angles. Use drones to make you lose focus of them and when it comes to dogfights, they won't attack one at a time, but force you to fight several of them at once. There is a decent number of weapons to choose from, ranging from the most basic pulse racer to dark matter rockets annihilating everything in the wake of their destruction. I personally prefer the beam laser, as it nostalgically reminds me of the phasers from Star Trek. Using your weapons requires energy, of which you have a limited amount, but if you aren't using it, firing your guns or boosting, you regain it at a decent pace. Next up is resource gathering, the task you will be spending most of your time actually doing. Flying around, looking for all the resources at the location you are at the moment. There is quite a number of them to be gathered, and some are more important than others. Probably the most important one is fuel as you need it to safely jump from one location to the other. The second most important one are likely nanobots, as those are used to repair your ship, both in terms of the hull and in terms of individual parts of your ship, like sensors or life support. It is always a good idea to keep a healthy supply of them on your ship. The second part of resource gathering is done through finding containers that contain either more resources or some tech that you can choose to incorporate onto your ship, or to discard it, getting more materials from it. The variance in how many resources you can actually find at a given location is huge. Occasionally, there will be just a few notes to mine, and other times, you will be given a plethora of resources to pick up and then use. All of this makes each individual run different and greatly increases the game's replayability. And use them you will, more specifically on crafting. Over time you will gather more and more blueprints, allowing you to craft the specific pieces of gear you like once you get the resources in that particular run to build them. Crafting is pretty simple. You just pick what you want to build, click it, and it gets built if you have the necessary resources for it. But I do wish that the crafting menus would be a little more clear and gave you easier access to the choices you actually have available. But once you get used to them, they serve their purpose and crafting is not really the meat of the game. You can also use your resources to improve your equipment, usually at the cost of more energy consumption, decreasing the amount of energy you can use for your weapons and boost. Lastly, there are the roguelike elements of the game. These come in two forms. First being the procedural generation of location, meaning each and every location you visit is unique both in terms of its visuals and in terms of its content. This fact guarantees that you get something new with every playthrough, again, adding towards the game's replayability. The second portion of roguelike elements comes after every run, where the credits you gathered are carried over and allow you to improve your ship with perks. There is a decent number of perks available for you to choose from, ranging from things like improving the basic speed of your ship, through making your scanners better, up to additional slots for equipment. All of these things together create a very good game, but it all could be wrecked by pacing, just like No Man's Sky was. I am glad to say, this isn't the case here. Each location you visit can be usually finished in a matter of minutes. Sure, occasionally you will get one where there are so many resources scattered around that it will take you a bit longer to get them all, but even then, it's 10-15 minutes tops, and if you're bored with it, 
you can just point your ship towards the jump point and move on to the next location. The last thing I want to talk about is the game's performance. I run a pretty good rig, with the Nvidia 1070 GPU and the game never fell under 100 FPS for me at 1080p. So it should run good for most of you guys there, keeping a 60 plus FPS at almost every rig with the appropriate settings. To conclude, the game handles pretty well, runs well and looks just incredible. If you enjoy space games, this is something to definitely keep on your radar for its soon coming release. I've certainly had my fun with it. But also remember, this video was done in an early access version. Things may change, but I doubt they will be changing very much. At least the things I actually talked about here shouldn't change much. That's it for today guys. My name is Krolizitz and I hope you have enjoyed the video. If you did and you want to help me grow this channel, subscribe and like the video. If you didn't like it, dislike it. See you all next time with more gaming content.